What if I told you that the legend of the demons present in the Akuma no Mi were actually the inherited will being passed down through the fruit by those who were once called demons, and what we are currently seeing in the One Piece manga is Joy Boys will incarnating in Luffy? What if I told you that Luffy having the powers of a resin makes a lot more sense than it may make sense in our minds? That's what we are going to talk about in today's video. So if you want to be a pirate king like me and achieve eternal glory, go ahead and press the like button with all the power of your Akuma no Mi, and if you're new here my dear sailor, already subscribe to the channel and don't forget to activate the notifications bell so you don't miss any new video here from Anime Joy Boy, okay? Then join this crew that will dominate the entire Grand Line and the New World. Now without further ado let's get to this epic video. And well my dear pirate. To start off I would like to talk about music, and how important music is in One Piece, but specifically for the context of this current moment we are living in One Piece. In the last years this has been discussed a lot. Binks no sake and so on, the music in One Piece has been much more important than it was before, hasn't it? And if we analyze the book, Encyclopedia of Things That Never Were, in that book it mentions the legend of a figure called Joy Boy, this figure solved the problems of humanity through the songs he made with his drum, and we stopped to think about it, and we remember Luffy that in the beginning of the story wanted a musician much more than any other member that would be in theory much more important as a cook or a doctor for example. And now that we think about it, it makes a lot of sense that Luffy would think about it, even if he didn't know that he was thinking about something really important. A few weeks ago we had the release of the album containing the soundtrack with all the songs used during Wano's arc, and there are two of them that are very specific, firstly track 14, and pay attention sailors and hold on to your chairs, because it is something very absurd. Track 14 is called. Luffy Awakening. Unfortunately, I can't play it here due to copyright issues, but if you pay attention to this song you will notice that it uses strong drum sounds that sound more like a heartbeat rhythm. And also, the next track, track number 15 on this album is called, Awaken Luff's Performance, Now you may ask, how come they gave such a big spoiler like that on a Wano Arc soundtrack album despite this not being confirmed until then? I understand that in the same way that we have some media, be it figures or other merchandising products, it is common for these types of products to leak information that has not yet been shown in a certain movie, and many people use this as a way to theorize and support their theories. This used to happen a lot with Dragon Ball and its counterfeit figures, before the most recent Dragon Ball movies it was very common to see some counterfeit figures with Goku or some other character with red or blue hair. And because of this many say that, fake Dragon Ball figures ended up confirming the Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue transformations. And I believe that in this case of One Piece the songs having kind of revealed Luffy's transformation can be seen in the same way as in the case of the fake figures. It was an album that needed to be released, the songs would have their names, so the name was put in a way that it should be in the end, regardless of whether it happened in the manga or was revealed earlier, thus being an occasionality or something that was not premeditated. And speaking of music, I'd like to go back to the importance of the song, Binks no Sake which seems to spoiler everything we know about One Piece, and in a certain part of this song it spoilers exactly what we are experiencing now. Follow along with me this excerpt from the lyrics. Now comes the storm across the distant sky. Now the waves are dancing, the beating of the drums. If you lose heart, this breath may be your last. But if you hold on, the sun will rise. My sailors? Did you see how the images clearly accompany everything we are seeing now? We saw the storm being brought in by Kaido. We saw the Wano sea waves that are kind of dancing. We also have the drums, the beating of the drums as we saw in the last chapter, and the sighing that might be the last one in case Luffy can't take it, and we know that Luffy is pretty much dead, but we have the morning sun that is going to rise that symbolizes the dawn that is coming to the country of Wano after this long night is over, after this great war that is going on during this night is over. Along with that also with the presence with the sun god Nika, who is historically a figure responsible for freeing slaves and the people of Wano have been enslaved by Kaido for a long time. So it all makes a lot of sense. Not to mention that the awakening may have to do with Luffy enduring the transformation and awakening as another being just as we have seen in recent manga spoilers. 
Now let's go back to chapter 1043 of the One Piece manga to dig even deeper. A lot of people used this chapter, more precisely the number 1043, to try to find out more about what was going on since Oda has this thing about playing with the wordplay that Japanese numbers and letters have, and he has this habit, and it's something relatively easy to do since Japanese numbers can be read in many different ways. And if we take the number 1043 we can form the word, J-U-S-H-I-M-I. And if we put the number 10 together with the number 4 we get Jushir which is exactly the word for, resin. Now let's go even deeper, remembering the three favorite pages of One Piece for Oda, and see how they seem to interconnect within this context that we are seeing here, and now what is happening with Luffy. The first one would be the one where Luffy is around the campfire at the end of the Skypiea arc, and I don't even need to tell you how this image of Luffy, this silhouette is very reminiscent of the silhouette of the sun god Nika, and even better, are the drums being played right behind him by Usopp, representing the drums of liberation. This is very clear to me. Now the second page would be chapter 496. You may be thinking now. What is so special about that page that it would be one of Oda's favorites? Calm down my sailors, let's analyze this page very calmly. First we have to remember that in a part of this chapter it is said that the roots of a tree hide a certain natural and special resin that forms the bubbles of that archipelago and through this the bubbles come out of the ground, we know very well how it works. But what else is special about this chapter besides, of course, mentioning a special resin? Well, let's go to Oda's third favorite page in chapter 909, which is the page where we see the capital of Wano in a completely open plan, a really very beautiful page, very eye-catching. And it's all interconnected as of now, as we have all this talk of Luffy liquefying like a resin, we have the figures of Nika and Joy Boy being inserted and discussed in this arc reminiscent again of the bonfire party back in Skypea, and now the capital of flowers in the land of Wano which is literally where everything is happening. And now that we see Luffy liquefying into a kind of resin, and we know that resin can take various forms such as the hardened form that serves for example to make some action figure, but we have the fact that it is flammable, as we see the Luffy's red hawk for example, and we also have the resin as an electrical insulator very good. And here it's worth remembering again the color cover of chapter 1039 where we have a monkey pointing and showing Luffy a yellowish and viscous substance just like Luffy melting in this last chapter. And there is more, in another double page we notice that Oda has already given us some small spoilers, or information, of transformations of some characters, notice how Robin is very similar to the Robin of the final fight of this arc besides Sanji with armor that reminds a lot of the Jerma double six. We also have Luffy with his hair and fists in the shape of flames that reminds once again the silhouette of the sun god Nika. But following the evidence there is a tree, which is very specific called, Ficus Elastica. This tree is also called the rubber tree, and this tree has a latex inside it that is used for the production of rubber, although it is not of the same level as a rubber tree, but the best part comes now my dear sailors, because this tree is originally from the Indian subcontinent and there, more specifically in the Maldives, it is called Nika. And now with all the evidence on the table, I will now address my opinion about all this. And well. Although all these references make a lot of sense whether they are purposeful or not after all we are talking about Oda, and he loves references, for me what ends up happening is that the change we are seeing in Luffy with him liquefying with the property and even the look of a resin is very cool but the problem is the historical reference. The historical weight that this would drop, because with the fruit having the name changed to Nika, or Nika Nika Nomi, carries more historical weight because, what is believed is that in the past people called Joy Boy the Rubber Man, but it turned out that this was changed as the abilities he used from Goma Goma Nomi was for that time more like a resin and not a rubber per se. In other words, we have a historical change possibly happening here, my fellow sailors. But thinking on the other side it also makes a lot of sense that the fruit is called Nika since it refers to Joy Boy who is a figure that should have been erased from the world, now the question that remains is how Luffy will apply these abilities using the powers of Nika, as it should be, more like a resin and not a rubber itself. And going back to the Japanese numerology, that 10 with the number 4 that forms the word Jushir that is resin, if we put all the numbers 10, 4 and 3 together forming J-U-S-H-I-M-I we have we can put it as, resin not yet. Since the kanji, MI can be read as, not yet. Look at how we reverse everything, and it's as if Oda is saying. Easy, easy resin? Not yet. Very interesting isn't it, 
But let's go to another important point of this video which is about the so-called, inherited will. That comes through the Akuma no Mi, many people have debated that perhaps Luffy has inherited the will of Joy Boy by Akuma no Mi, this concept is something that was already debated, but we still had nothing very concrete and this time the subject returned with force because now it seems that this makes a lot of sense. Now this would be possible since apparently Luffy is assuming a different personality as we saw in the leaked spoilers too, and this would be perfect because the connection between Luffy and Joy Boy is very plausible since both would have basically the same fruit besides the same physical structure since if we remember Joy Boy's silhouette is very similar to Luffy's and resembles a being made of rubber. And what we can question is where did this idea come from that the fruits carried demons and well, this idea, or fallacy, came up there in Eni's lobby, but this was taken as a legend. But now the question comes to mind about where this legend actually came from, this idea that the Akuma no Mi has in it demons. Could it be that it is not the so-called will that was passed through the fruits by the demon clan that were called, D, that makes sense if we stop to think about it right, and I don't say only the will could be passed through, but anything of the former bearer, any memory, fragment or personality could be passed through. A great example is Ace's Hiken which was used by Sabo afterwards without even having seen that blow in his whole life, of course that could be just a mention of how Sabo was amazing and talented in controlling the power of Maramara no Mi, but it could also be some memory or something that Sabo doesn't even feel, but that happened and made him able to use that ability in such an easy way. Just like what happened with Blackbeard who used Whitebeard's Akuma no Mi right after, even though he witnessed Whitebeard use this technique several times, but could it be a memory, or a fragment of Whitebeard's will? But then you would say that if that was the case, why did Luffy take so long to control his powers, well, we can say that a long time has passed, and that Joy Boy's memories have been dormant and everything else. But there is an argument that goes against all of this. The goal, D. Roger. Luffy is practically an exact copy of Roger who is an exact copy of Joy Boy, but Roger didn't have the fruit that both Joy Boy and Luffy had, apparently, so how can we explain all this? Is it just a coincidence of fate, or is it Oda's artistic freedom? And another thing I'd like to talk to you about is that in case this theory is confirmed, that the wills can be passed on by the Akuma no Mi, this would be kind of a prophecy, and this would be a good argument for Naruto fans to mock us, because many of our fandom complained about Naruto having all this business of prophecy and wills, legacies, inherited by their ancestors. And if this happens in One Piece 2, it seems that we will literally all be in the same boat, given the proportions of course. And finally, my dear sailors. Let's talk about the term, purpose, or inherited will. When you inherit something from someone it's not by coincidence or something, you literally inherit because you have to inherit it, it's that simple, everything that is happening seems more like a direct link as in Naruto itself than a will that anyone can end up inheriting and carrying, but anyway, this is just a reflection anyway. But now I want to know what you think of these ideas and of everything we have talked about here, there are still more things about destiny that I would like to address, but this will be for a future video. But of course, if you made it this far it's because you liked the content, so it doesn't hurt to subscribe to our channel and become one more member of our fleet, my dear sailor. And of course, do not forget to press the like button that helps a lot in spreading the video and the channel, so help us to become the largest fleet of pirates here on YouTube, beauty. A big hug for everyone. And until the next video.